Hey, what's going on everyone? Justin here, and this video is going to be a little bit different today. It's definitely going to be a little bit more casual. It's going to be more of just like a little kind of conversation and whatnot. It might be a little bit on the longer side though. I guess a lot of my videos kind of run on the longer side as well, but I would probably grab a snack or a drink of choice. You know, it wouldn't be coffee or tea for me, but I digress. But yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and get started with the BookTube journey tag. Now, this was created over at Katie uh, from Books and Things, and I was tagged by Emma over at A Cup of Books. Uh, I can't speak too much on Katie's channel, uh, just from the little bit I've seen. Um, I hadn't watched her before uh, being tagged in this. Um, it looked pretty good. Um, um, but I can speak to Emma's channel. Just a really, really cool person with a lot of cool stuff on her channel, especially if you like nonfiction, which if you're on my channel, you probably like some nonfiction. Highly encourage you to check out uh, Emma's channel, a couple books as well. But yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and get started here. So we have question number one. How long have you been watching BookTube? And I believe it was either November or December of 2018. And yes, that's, or no, uh, of 2017. Okay, November, December of 2017. And I know that's kind of a specific-ish, pretty specific date. And that's because question number two was, uh, or is how long have you been making booktube videos? And that is January of 2018. Um, so yeah, it's pr pretty weird. I only watched for maybe a month tops. So that's probably even like, it was probably a couple weeks um, from when I discovered like, booktube <laughs> as like kind of a thing i knew there were like you know videos on books but i didn't realize there was like that whole like sub culture sub niche of booktube on youtube uh but yeah once i figured that out i was like wow there's like a community of book people <laughs> like it's a whole thing um and then i yeah started making videos like pretty much right after that uh question number three is yeah what made you start making videos um well i actually it's kind of interesting because a lot of times on the booktube newbie tag a lot of people talk about, you know, not having a lot of friends that read books or no one to talk to about books, so they start booktube and stuff. I actually do have one really good friend who is, reads, oh, maybe, I don't know if he reads as much as I do, but he reads a lot. Of course, he reads, like, a lot of stuff for his, like, PhD uh, research and all that stuff in English literature. Um, I'll leave a link to one of the videos. Uh, he uh, We just did a tag. His name's Tim, but, yeah, he's doing a PhD in Arthurian literature and whatnot. Um, so I actually get to talk to if I have bookish stuff, I actually do talk to him uh, quite a bit about that. Um, but mine was more just, yeah, I didn't think it through. I just saw a book bookish community on YouTube and I was like, wait a second. I read a lot of books. I have a lot of books. I like a lot of books. I want to be super narcissistic and also talk about books on the internet, basically. Um, I don't know. There, there, was, there wasn't like a huge reason. It was more just, you know... I like books. I like spreading books. Um, I did notice, you know, nonfiction wasn't as big of a thing as compared to, you know, the fantasy and the way, excuse me, YA stuff and the classics. So I was like, you know, I could just spread nonfiction and whatnot. Though uh, my channel wasn't quite the same it was now as it was back then. And we'll get to that in a couple of the later questions as well. Great. Question number four. Are there any people who have played a significant role in your booktube journey? Um, I don't know about significant. Um, I will say over the past several years, um, I've taken a lot of breaks. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm notoriously known for unfortunately uh like to the 2023 was definitely like <clears throat> excuse me like my worst year I think I only put out about a dozen videos I had a bunch like in January then I had like I want to say like six or seven months off or something like that and I think I had a couple of videos like in August or September and that was it um in 2022 really wasn't the greatest year um either and a lot of it was kind of work work kind of related I don't know I just didn't do a good job balancing things and whatnot but i will say over you know the course of like the six years and stuff i've had a lot of booktube friends um unfortunately i really only knew them through like the booktube stuff uh back when book like i was on twitter not when it was twitter and whatnot um and you know everyone we were posting videos and stuff but we'd always comment and kind of like direct message a bunch of times and stuff um but i can i you know i'm still subscribed to like a bunch of channels that don't have videos now and uh things just because like when they got done um, but yeah, I would say like a lot of friendship. I don't know if anything like significant as far as like pushing me to think, like, yeah, I'm not, I'm can't think, unfortunately, I can't think of anything super significant. Um, I will say though, the person who tagged me, like Emma over at uh, a couple books, 
Uh, we did do a, a couple of hi uh, history readathons um, a couple years during like lock. Uh, I want to say yeah, I think it was 2020 and 2021. Um, I will say like those were like really cool and stuff. And <clears throat> you know maybe I'm hinting a little bit too much, but there might be something or other or some things down the road maybe this year if you you know if you've been following my channel i've been posting a bunch of polls on readathon specifically related questions and whatnot so um i'll just leave it at that all right question number five what kind of books do you like to read all right so i'd say my split is roughly 90 percent non eh, I, maybe 85 now technically but you know 80 90 percent non-fiction to 10 ish percent fiction um, I'll start with the small, the, like the smaller fiction side. Is uh, my guilty pleasure reading is just Warhammer stuff. It's you know, I shouldn't say it's bottom of the barrel, kind of like you know genre fiction. But this is be I mean it's beyond genre fiction. It's you know 40k and Age of Sigmar and stuff. But uh, I, it's just a guilty pleasure, kind of like relaxation thing for me. I'm into that kind of like hobby and lore and all that kind of tabletop stuff. So. Um, for me, it just works out really well. Um, the only other like, actual fans I read is Tolkien. Um, and that's about it for fiction. Now, as for non-fiction, um, it's, I want to say, I'd say it's probably 30-40% history, probably 30 or 40% uh, nature reads of some sort, some sort of science, nature-y kind of descript, I would say. Um, and then like kind of a little smattering of other things, uh, like I've recently read some sociology books. Uh, try I vaguely keep trying to push myself to read like philosophy type stuff um, uh, biography memoirs kind of fall in like kind of the history camp a lot of the time but you know um, a few things on just like literature and stuff that's like nonfiction um, but yeah um, definitely history and nature are you know the two pillars that everything else sort of rests on for sure so question number six is, how has this changed since you started? Now, if you are a long, long, long time subscriber, which if you are, props to you for sticking with me for this many years, my channel name wasn't always Triumphal Reads. For those who don't know, it used to be, <clears throat> what was it? Triumphs of History and Fantasy, because you know, that rolls off the tongue <laughs> so well. Um, yeah, it used to, my vague impression of what I was gonna do my channel was, history and fantasy series uh, back when I used to read like actual like fantasy books and whatnot uh, that didn't last that didn't last uh, that was what uh, I think in during COVID that's when I pretty much stopped reading fantasy which you know you think that'd be the time to read more fantasy but no, I just used it to read more like nature and history books and stuff um, I had always I've always like kind of read sciencey books and things uh, but just you know just a little bit here and there and that uh, when I was doing like booktube in the first like couple years and stuff, I just was able, I just was reading a little bit more and stuff and I just started picking up better ones and I guess some of that really clicked really well and yeah, it just stuck with me and I started reading a lot more nature stuff and I realized, yeah, this is like actually the genre that I really should be reading and just kind of drop fantasy <laughs> off to the side. So yeah, uh, so definitely a big change uh, there. History is still a, a big pillar though. All right, question number seven. What kind of videos do you like to make? Well, I, I like the, I do kind of like, I know like big giant channels don't always like, like them. And a lot of the like bookish channels that try to separate themselves from booktube don't like, you know, the, the booktube staples, like, you know, uh, the wrap ups, the book hauls and the TBRs and stuff. I kind of like them because it takes a lot of the pressure off because they're just, they're easy to make uh, for me and it's just basically you're just kind of thinking about books and stuff and you just kind of like do them. I will say my favorite actually is probably um, either just recommendations, like, you know, just like my favorite you know, ancient history books or whatever. Um, I do like those. I usually, if I if I stay consistent, I do, the first like couple of years I did booktube, I do it like at the half year mark, you know, my favorite biographies are my favorite you know medieval history so far during the year and then i do it again at the end of the year or the you know the very beginning of the following year um but i would say probably one of my favorite ones actually now that i'm starting to do uh recently is uh 
upcoming releases um, I just really enjoy because it gives me it makes me have to set aside a little bit of time to just like research and kind of like peruse the catalogs and like on their publisher websites and stuff to kind of like see what's coming out in the near future and that kind of makes me think about all the different I guess topics and categories and I just see a lot um, and it just makes me think about things I'd want to read or maybe branch out a little bit um, plus I like finding a lot of books that um, I don't really see hardly anyone else talk about um, and then when I highlight, you know, just kind of my favorites over the month, even if I don't actually end up reading them, I think a lot of people kind of like, like just hearing about these like kind of unique books that maybe they hadn't heard about and, you know, hopefully maybe that's like a really good read uh, for them. Um, I used to do a lot of like outdoor videos as well, and I'm going to start bringing that back, uh, hopefully in the near future here, uh, where I would kind of go on like nature walks and just uh, sometimes it would be like on a specific thing like either like a tag video like this or me like I kind of I'm kind of trying to think of a way to maybe do wrap ups during like nature walks and stuff and then sometimes I would just have like kind of bookish discussions on like different topics um, I'm definitely going to be vaguely trying to bring those back as well so yeah those are the kinds of videos I like uh, number eight, how has that changed and has your video making style changed? Um, my video making style I don't think has changed all that much to be honest. Like I have different spots. I try to make it look a little bit nicer and that kind of thing every now and then. I probably should like upgrade into like a actual like camera instead of my phone and whatnot. But um, just trying to think anything has changed uh, as far as like what I prefer. I don't ha I'm not see my problem is I feel like I'm not very creative and I've tried a couple creative video ideas and I just scrap them like halfway through or like when I'm in the editing process so I just don't I just don't think they're like good compared to like everyone else's and I know you're not really supposed to like, compare but um, as far as like actual creative stuff I feel like creativity is like one of my weaknesses just in general um, so yeah I don't know uh, I feel like that's something I need to like work on but that's partially why like my videos generally haven't changed like all that much if that makes sense uh, number nine do you script and or edit your videos and has that changed so editing uh, who is she? <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie like as you probably see from this video this is mostly actually like one take um, every now and then if something like disastrous happens like I totally just screw up and just draw like every now and then I do even draw like a few blinks and I kind of like leave them in I kind of like the unscripted raw style of a lot of like those are the videos I generally uh, prefer to watch I'm not gonna lie I hate jump cuts like I, every time you have um or like or whatever and you cut it out and it's like that you know like I'm too lazy like I would I could just do jump cuts in here and like this like past like 10 seconds to shoot like well I mean everyone knows what it is but I'm not going to because I don't like it. I don't know. I just, editing is by far. I think it's everyone's like. We, well, I shouldn't say everyone. There are people that just really like making it like look really cool and wow and pop and everything. But um, editing, but for me is just. I don't know. I'd rather either just be reading or talking about the books rather than. And like I said, I just feel like I'm not like that creative, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to be really doing besides like taking out like the disasters, like when my cats or my dog or something like knocks the video over, or people just like barge through the room like yelling, which has happened before, and things falling off like completely. That's happened before, you know, stuff like that. I take out, but. Um, yeah, I just, I don't like editing, I'm just not, I don't, I feel like maybe if I took, like, some kind of course or class in it, and, like, found ways to make it faster, or, like, shortcuts to make it better, and that kind of thing, I, maybe I'd like it more, but, yeah, that's just, uh, not happening in the near future, I'll tell you that. Um, but let's see, um, do you script? No, I don't script, like, at all. Like, I wish I kind of did, in a way. I feel like I'd be a lot more eloquent, um, a lot more articulate. But no, I'm just too lazy to script out a whole thing. And I'm making it sound like I don't care about my videos at all, the way I'm like presenting it and everything. But um, no, I, just, I mean, I think about it before I do the video. Like, like I said, I do like research sometimes, depending on the video. Um, think about kind of, and every now and then I write down like a few little things, um, like a lot of like my, my book reviews and then a few tags and stuff. I'll usually have like a sticky, you know, like in the book or in this book, my little notebook or whatever, just to make sure I hit on certain points and whatnot. But yeah, I don't like script anything out unless it's, unless it's like a literal quote or something. But even then that's like, that's super rare. All right. So that was nine. So number 10, what's the most viewed video on your channel oh geez 
I should have wrote it down, but I actually know what this one is. It's like, it's my first iteration of my, I want to say it was like my top five, it's called my top five-ish favorite history books. Um, I'll put a link up there. It's like, it's super old. I think I actually put that out for like the History Challenge readathon the first time we did it. And I've done like newer iterations of it, but that one, and I say it does well, I think it's like at 20 or 30k views, which really isn't like anything in the big scheme of things on YouTube and whatnot. Um, but it kind of, I think it like overshadows like my other iterations of it where I've like updated it or like have different books to present and stuff. And they just don't seem to get as much traction as that. And I'm, like I said, I'm just not good with like algorithms. I'm not good with thumbnails. I'm not good with, you know, SEO and all that stuff. So, uh, I don't know if that's one of my veins as well. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely my most viewed one. I think my second one is my, uh, something about like Folio Society designs, like where I just kind of go over like my favorite Folio Society like books just based on uh, either the cover design or the way the layout is and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so those are my top performing ones. Uh, what's the favorite, your favorite video you've ever made? I'll say like any of the videos I do with my friend Tim, um, I think it's really fun. Uh, just kind of getting like two different perspectives on things and we can kind of just have it's almost like having we i think we do good enough where it's almost like kind of just having a conversation but it's just like getting recorded in a way um i feel like maybe <laughs> kind of wish like sometimes when we weren't like planning out a video and just talking about things or like books or authors or whatever you know get those recorded um there's been a couple we've done too that were uh, super crazy as well there used to there was one thing uh called the drunk book tag and a lot of people were doing it, but not actually like drinking like during it, you know, you know, they'd be like, ah, this isn't actually alcohol or whatever. And we were like, hmm, that's not fair. That's not a real, that's not following the rules. And we did a, uh, <laughs> we did it once uh, where, and then, um, yeah, it was a disaster. Well, I'll just say it's a disaster. And there's actually a video of me talking about it afterwards. It's called like the aftermath of the drunk book tag or whatever. We were sobered up like the next day and we were like, we were talking about, yeah, that was just, yeah. <laughs> you know, some of these videos like never see the light of day, but they were, you know, things like that are fun to do with friends. And that's what I'm saying. Like I'd say anything with uh, my friend Tim is probably like up there in like my top ones. All right, da, 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 da. what was that? Number 11, so we're on 12. Do you have a favorite book you read because of BookTube? Yes, I do. And actually, here's like one of my one edits I'm gonna put in the video. All right, so I've returned and it's Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teaching of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmer. I read this in 2020. I'd seen it, you know, like, I'd seen it like, Thing kind of on my own just kind of was kind of like vaguely on my radar and then I saw like tons of people just bringing it up and talking about it I was like oh, I'll give it a try and I was like wow why didn't I read this is like one of the few times where like a really hype book actually went beyond the hype like when I read it a lot of times I feel like let down just because I'm like setting the bar too high this one I've talked about it several zillion times on my channel and I probably will continue to talk about it a zillion times on my channel um this would be like you know one of those questions like if you're, if you're trapped on a desert island what's the one book you're gonna bring this will pro this is like the new answer i have for this or for that question um it's just super fantastic uh dealing with kind of like you know indigenous philosophies and like ways of thinking along with western science blending them into like the greatest thing ever plus like just really nice thoughtful memoir uh vignettes and everything just super beautifully written love it love it love it i if you only read one book this year, read this one. Do it. Do it. You won't regret it. All right. So there. That's like, like I said, one edit in there. Read Braiding Sweetgrass. Let's go on. I feel like I'm probably at about like 8, 15, 16, 17 minutes now too. I feel like this is starting to, <laughs> it's starting to go into documentary like territory or whatnot. All right. Do you have a favorite booktube experience to talk about? Um, I would say uh, doing the readathon, like actually hosting the readathon when we did the history challenge those two years. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just really fun. I joined tons and tons of readathons. Like this year, I've already done like three, two or three now uh, since starting back up in February. And I, I kind of have the vague idea of joining at least one every month. And if I don't do every month, do at least every two months. Um, I just find it's a really good way to kind of engage with other booktubers and other commenters and other people that just read on like the disc, like if they have discord, uh, 
if the Reader's Lounge has a Discord channel and stuff. Um, I've been really enjoying either lurking on a few of them, like People April. <laughs> I've posted a couple of things, but and then Historathon, uh, that Discord, I feel really engaged with like tons of people on there. So I just feel really cool about that. It's just fun talking about books, not like on a video setting. Um, but anyways, like I said, hosting a readathon is uh, sometimes it's a little bit of work and everything. But yeah, I I don't know. I do I do remember <clears throat> the first time we did it, especially. You know, it was the year of COVID, it was 2020, I don't know, I just felt like getting people out and reading history books and stuff and everyone kind of talking about it and having a great time, I don't know, that was just like one of my favorite highlights, I would say, for that. All right, question number 14, what does your book collection look like? All right, well, I promised a library tour for the past like three years now. Um, I, I, I wrote it down as a bookish goal to get to sometime this year. So that is going to happen. I'm going to happen. <laughs> I will make myself figure something out. So, um, as you can see behind me, I actually got books up here on the top shelf. I got, let's see, so top shelf and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got six shelves here. There's one column of six, two columns. Uh, and then I made these corner ones, so three and four. So I got, I'd say, if I count that one just kind of as one big one, the corner one, we got 24 shelves here, plus, I guess, the top row. And then over across the room, I built another, actually, the other one, actually, that one was first before this one. Um, there's six more shelves, plus the top one, but the top one is actually, like, kind of just, like, some of my favorite books, display book kind of things. Um, and this is actually the slim down version. Uh, for those who have been watching my channel for a long time, I actually used to do my videos in another room with a bigger library. Um, but uh, I, after some room changes and stuff, that library had to go, those shelves had to go. Um, and I made those ones too. Um, I can't remember if I, I don't think I repurposed the shelves, unfortunately, because they just like didn't work out. Because I think I changed a few things and whatnot. But yeah, I built these shelves. Uh, to fit kind of like our entryway mudroom just to kind of make it look look nice and everything but what was even the question <laughs> what is your uh what does your book collection look like okay so anyways this column over here is all my nature and science books uh then we got ancient history greek history roman history medieval history more medievalish vaguely modern just and then a couple like different collections world war one there's Ospreys, Theodore Roosevelt, some more random stuff. Down there's a lot of philosophy books and just kind of random books I don't really know what to do with. Tiny little autograph section, Oxford Very Short Introductions, my Punic War Shelf, my fancy history books, and then Folio Society and Tolkien. So, anyways. Oh, and then across there we got all my like kind of more, I don't, I don't want to say technical, but kind of more, I don't know, like monography, technical sciencey like zoology taxonomy kind of books and all my field guides and my gardening books and outdoor living kind of books so yeah <laughs> i hope that answers the question vaguely oh and then number 15 what advice would you give to new people starting so i you know i'll give the general advice is not worry about the numbers because i don't even i don't know what i'm doing like i have 4k which sounds like a lot compared to you know if you only have like 500 or 200 you know that 4k is like ah but you know when you've been doing it for like five or six years you're like eh, 4k is that really like a lot no not really uh like i've seen people in like like the first month get like 10k just because they're a bit cooler and better and just more edited <laughs> just nice you know it's just a well more produced thing like, that's my problem is, you know, you get what you put in uh, partially, though the algorithm and all that, well, sometimes things take off and I don't really understand why. But don't worry about the numbers. Worry more. It's quality over quantity, if that makes sense. Um, I love how I just, I'm, I'm arguing quality over quantity when I'm just made this giant argument about how I don't edit videos or do anything like that. Um, but I will say, don't try to chase things you don't like. Like, see, like I started out in fantasy and history. And I ended up starting to not really like fantasy. I wasn't really reading a lot that I enjoyed a lot. You know, wasn't really looking forward to reading it. But I figured, you know, I had to kind of keep up with other people. And it just wasn't panning out, so I dropped it. Um, but I would say, like, as quality over quantity. And there are some people that somehow read, you know, 20, 30. I've seen more than 30 books a month. I don't 
really understand how that's possible. And I feel like I read a lot when I average around like nine or ten, usually depending on like the different sizes of books and stuff. Um, I feel like that's like pushing it because like I, I mean, I, it, reading really is like one of my biggest hobbies. Um, and then doing the videos obviously kind of gives me a little bit more impetus to do it as well. But uh, yeah, I would say read quality more than quantity. If that makes sense and then yeah, like I said don't worry about the numbers and stuff um, I would say engage with the community you know if you're joining a readathon if they have a discord server you know talk to other people on it and like about their books like what they're reading what you're reading all that kind of stuff I feel like it's just kind of a little like kind of hidden avenue that a lot of people because a lot of people that don't do videos or maybe don't like commenting on videos and stuff um, I've met a couple of different people that way, like, you know, in the, on the internet and stuff through Discord and stuff over, like, books and stuff. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so hopefully that was kind of some advice. I don't know. I don't know if it's good advice. Like I said, take that with a grain of salt, but there you have it. And then number 16 is to tag people. All right, so I got a, a few people. I'd like to hear their thoughts and whatnot. Um, the first two here are the host of People April, um, which is the readathon event that I am participating in in April. And they're doing a really good job on their Discord. I, I keep bringing that up, talking and engaging with the community and stuff. And I've been kind of mostly lurking on, in on that one. Um, but I, I just really enjoy what everyone's like discussing there. So I figure I. I'll include them on this one, and it's Ross over at Scally Dandling about the books, and Elizabeth at Bukins of Books. Um, and then the next four are channels that I f have followed for a long time, um, and either I just really like their vibe, their content, what they, you know, what they read, and then in some cases just kind of how they discuss things. I feel like they'll have like a really good video just kind of talking, making a great chat about the video, and it'll just be really enjoyable for uh, people to listen to. So we got Heidi over at My Reading Life, Fred at Read by Fred, Kier at Kira the Scrivener, and Hannah at Hannah's Books. So I'm tagging all of you guys, and then if you want to do the video as well, go ahead and do it as well so there you have it that was the book two journey tag i feel like this video has been probably a long and tedious journey for anyone who stuck around this long but thank you so much for watching and if you made it to the end props to you you know <laughs> you should win an award and whatnot but uh anyways i don't really have a good segue for my you know my ending signature phrase here i think with the i probably should have came up with something creative but like i was saying earlier i'm not super creative but whatever you end up reading in the near future always remember Read victoriously.